To be honest with you, I usually get very annoyed when I see problems on strings and they ask me to change a character. Because usually it means that there can be so many different combinations possible and that makes the problem difficult to tackle. Because then you need to come up with even efficient approaches. But you will be very excited and interested to know that this problem can be solved using the sliding window approach. Let's see how we can do that. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, we will go over the problem statement and understand the sample test cases. We will start off with a brute force approach that won't be viable. And then we are going to use the sliding window approach to find an efficient solution that works in a order of n time. After that, we will also do a trial of the code so they can visualize all of this. Without further ado, let's get started. Starting with the problem, let's make sure that we are able to understand it correctly. In this problem statement, we are given a string and an integer k. Now you can do some operations on this string. How do you define an operation? In one operation, you can pick any character in the string and you can change it to any character. And then what is the significance of k? You can perform this operation a maximum of k times. So given all of this, you need to find the longest substring that you can form that has all the repeating characters. So what does all of this actually mean? For example, I have this test case over here with me. This is my string and the value of k is 2. It means that I can do a maximum of two operations. And I want to find out a longest substring such that my characters are repeated. So I can pick up any character, right? So what I can do is I can pick up this b and change it to a. That makes up one operation. And then I can also pick up this second b and change it to a. So what will happen? My string will become a, 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 a. And you can see that this is the longest substring I can form and all of the characters are repeating. So for this particular test case, 4 is your answer. Notice that there are multiple ways by which you can pick these characters. For example, you could also pick both the A's in your operation and then form the string as B, 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 B. This is also a valid answer, but the length will still remain the same. So you don't have to worry about what the final string will become. You just need to tell me what is the longest substring that you can make. Similarly, we can look at one more test case. I have this even bigger string with me. And this time I am allowed only one operation. So you can see that there are so many choices available. What do you do? Change this A to B, change this A to B or change this A to B. Or rather, would you want to change this B to A? So you can see that there will be so many possible combinations. And out of all of these combinations, these two combinations are also possible. And once again, you will see that you cannot find any other substring which has more than four characters that are repeating. And this is the longest substring. So once again, for this test case also, four will be your answer. So that is why the problem statement says that there can be multiple ways to achieve this result. We are not interested in what string you are deriving. We are only interested in the longest substring that you can find. So the length is four. And in this case also, the length is four. So now if you feel that you have understood the problem statement even better, feel free to first try it out again on your own. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. To begin with our solution, let us take up a sample test case. I have this string with me and I am only allowed two operations, right? So when you start to take a look at this string, what thought comes in your mind? What you can do is you can start to iterate the string from the beginning. You can see that, okay, A is one character, then you get an A again, and then you get a B. So what do you do? You can try to swap it. You can change B to A and then, okay, you move ahead. Once again, it is A, so don't worry. Then you find a B, okay, now you want to change it because you can make one more operation. You change it to A and then you move to C and that is where you stop because you cannot make any other operations. So this is one length that you found. In the next iteration, what will you do? You will again start from A and then you will see, okay, I found a B. So you will either try to change this or you will try to change this. And based upon what path you chose, you will find one more character and then you will decide what do you want to change it to. So this is how a brute force approach will work. You will start off from the first character and go as far as you can. 
then start from the second character, go as far as you can, then third, then fourth, then fifth. This is the brute force approach. And you can certainly see that it can end up taking so much time. If the string is huge, it will take up so much time just to find some possible candidates. Naturally, this is not what we want. You have to come up with an efficient solution. So what do we do over here? To start thinking about an efficient solution, let us look at the test case once again and go over it character by character. So I see my first character and that is A. So right now we can't do pretty much anything with it. So we let it be. And then we move ahead. So we find out the second character. Okay, that is A again. So in a way, what are you finding out? You are finding out a window in which you are getting all of your repeated characters. So currently you have found out a window size of two, right? So in this window, all of your characters are repeating. At the same time, what we are also going to do is we are going to keep a track of the frequency of each character that we have encountered. So up till now, I have found out that there are two A's, right? Let us move ahead now. And this time I encounter the character B. Also, my window size has now changed and my window size is three. Now notice our window. I have encountered a different character. And to make all of the characters to be the same, you have to change some of them. So what will you change? Will you change this B to A or you are going to change both of these A to B? Definitely you are going to swap B to A because that involves one operation whereas changing both of these A to B will involve two operations. So naturally, what are you changing? You are changing the characters which have the least frequency. So that is why this map is very, very helpful. You are constantly updating how many occurrences of each character have you found out. So in this window, I have found out two A's and one B. And this max frequency variable is also keeping a track of what is the maximum frequency available. So right now I have a window size of three and the maximum frequency is two. So how many characters do you have to change? You will have to change window size minus maximum frequency. So this is telling me the characters that need to be changed. Right now, this equates to one. That means by changing one character, I'm good. And what is the limit? The limit is two. So you're good over there. You don't have to worry and you can move ahead. So moving ahead, I get my next character and that is an A. As soon as you get an A, you will update your map and you will update your window size also. Along with it, the maximum frequency also updates. Now let us move ahead. For the next character, I get a B again. So I will update my map. The window size also changes, but the maximum frequency still remains three. Now look at this window again. My window size is five and the maximum frequency is still three. So how many characters will need to be changed? You will need to change window size minus maximum frequency because you will need to change any character that is not A, that is not the maximum frequency. So right now we are still good because five minus three equals to two and we are allowed a maximum of two operations. So we are still good so far. Move ahead and now let us try to include the next character C. What happens now? You will add and update your map. So the count of C now becomes one. Your window size changes and now you have six elements in your window. If you look at this window now, how many elements do you need to change such that all of them are same? You will need to swap B, B and then a C, right? That is three characters. And if you look in our formula, window size minus maximum frequency, that is three. But wait a minute, you are not allowed more than two operations. So this is why you need to always keep a check in your code such that if the characters needed to be changed are greater than K, then you reduce your window size. And if I reduce my window size, this is where the sliding window comes into play. Your window size has now reduced. So we lost an A. That means I am going to update my map. Both the window size and the maximum frequency will also change. The window size now becomes five and the maximum frequency is still two. Similarly, you move ahead and try to include the last character. It is a C again. So first of all, you update your map. Your window size becomes six and the maximum frequency is still two, right? So to make all of the characters same, 
how many characters will you need to change? You need to change at least four characters, right? So six minus two, that is four. But once again, four is greater than two. It is not allowed. So we are going to shorten our window once again. The frequency map, the window size, they both change. A becomes one and the window size becomes five. You can't move any more ahead. And this is where you stop. And all along the way, you need to keep a track of the maximum window size that was available to you because this is the valid window. And this ultimately will be your answer because you have traversed through all of the characters and found out that this was the maximum window possible. If you have understood the method, you can skip this part and go straight to the dry run of the code. But if you're still facing problems, I can go over an even bigger example and things will be crystal clear. So for this particular example, I have an even bigger string and the value of k is still 2. You want to find out the longest substring that you can form. So starting of things, I take my first character A. So what happens now? I update my map, my window size is 1 and the maximum frequency is still 1. Right now everything is good because the characters that needs to be changed equals to window size minus maximum frequency. Move ahead now. I take my second A. So I am going to update my map. The window size changes and the maximum frequency also changes. Moving ahead, I take my next character B. So I will update my map. The window size changes. It is 3, but the maximum frequency is still the same. You find out window size minus maximum frequency equals to 1. So you only need to change one character. But we are allowed two operations, so everything is fine. Go ahead and update your window. I find another character. So I update my map and my window size and the maximum frequency both change. I am still good because this value is less than equal to k. Move ahead and I get another character b. I will now update my map. The window size changes, but the maximum frequency still remains the same. 5 minus 3 equals to 2. I can change two characters, so everything is good. Move ahead now, I get my next character C. The map updates, the window size updates, and this time window size minus maximum frequency equals to 3. I cannot have three operations possible. So what do I need to do? I need to reduce my window size. I remove this A and this is going to update my map. At the same time, my window size and the maximum frequency also changes. Move ahead and I get a C again. You update your map, your window size changes, but the maximum frequency still remains the same. 6 minus 2 equals to 4. We are not allowed 4 operations, so you need to reduce the window size again. You get rid of this A and you are going to update your map and the window size. The maximum frequency, however, still remains 2. Go ahead now and try to include the B. You will update your map and this time the frequency of B becomes 3. Your window size changes and maximum frequency is updated too. But still 6 minus 3 equals to 3 and you are not allowed 3 operations. So once again, you will need to reduce your window size. The window size reduces, the frequency of B becomes 2, window size is 5 and the maximum frequency is still 2. You move ahead and try to include a C. The frequency of C becomes 3, window size is 6 and the maximum frequency is now 3. But still 6 minus 3 equals to 3. This is greater than 2, so you need to reduce your window size. This A gets lost. You update your map and the window size. Notice that the maximum frequency still remains 3. Include the next character and that is C. The frequency of C becomes 4, your window size becomes 6 and the maximum frequency changes to 4. Now notice, window size minus maximum frequency. That equals to 2. So this time you are allowed these two operations. So you can maintain a window size of 6. So what did we just do? We found an even bigger window. So this is how this code will continue to follow along and just try to do this last character on your own. You can see that in a single iteration, we are able to arrive at a result. On the left side of your screen, you will have the complete code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have this string and the value of k that is passed in as an input parameter to the function character replacement. To begin of things, what do we do? First of all, we create a frequency map that is going to store the frequency of each character. And along with it, we also start a left pointer that is telling me the starting point of my window. And I also maintain two more variables, the maximum frequency and the maximum window size I have found till now. Because you know that we will keep on updating it. 
going forward, you start your for loop. And this for loop is gonna keep on iterating over every character in the string. And with every character, what do you do? First of all, you will update the frequency of this character. So when I see a A, I say that, okay, the frequency of A is one. And in the next step, we try to update our maximum frequency. So with every character, this maximum frequency is going to keep a track that, hey, this is the maximum frequency I have found till now. And next, we also need to find out our window size. That is determined by the left and right pointers. So the window size will be right minus left plus one. That is because of the zero based indexing in an array, right? So while iterating along, we are going to always check if my window length or the characters that I need to be replaced anytime they become greater than K. As soon as they become greater than K, you need to reduce your window size. That is why you do a left plus plus. So your left pointer will keep on moving ahead. And at the same time, you will also update your frequency map. So this is how this loop will continue running and you are going to keep on iterating to find out that, hey, this is the maximum window length I can find, which has my longest substring. At the very end, you just return this maximum window and this will be the length. You don't need to tell me how will the string look when all of these characters are replaced. The time complexity of this particular solution is order of n because we iterate through the array only once and the space complexity of this solution is order of one. That is constant space because you do not take up any extra space and the only space that you're taking up is for this map and this map will only have a constant space. That is the 26 characters of the English alphabet. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that when it comes to strings and problems where you need to change the characters, I accept it is very hard that you can deduce that, hey, I will be able to use the sliding window algorithm because it does not come straight to your mind. But this is the beauty. We keep on practicing problems so that we are able to identify these patterns. So let me know in the comment section below, which other tricky problems have you found out, which unexpectedly use the sliding window algorithm. That way, it will become a very good collection. And whenever you want to iterate, you can just come back to this video and we will find all such problems. Also, if you found any other problems throughout the video, let me know. I will be very glad to help you out. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This really keeps me motivated and I can make more such videos. Also, a huge shout out to all of the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And as a member, you do get priority reply to your comments and early access to new videos as well. Stay tuned for my upcoming videos. Until then, see ya.